Senator Edwards. Madam President, it gives me great pleasure to join in any debate that we have here in the Senate, uh, but it gives me greater pleasure to join in this particular debate because I stand here with a lot of mixed emotions, especially coming into this, because as senators would know, uh, my story has been one um, that has been very tumultuous, uh, but it has led me to this place where I can contribute uh, to national development and to change in Trinidad and Tobago. And as you all would know, that upon my father's demise, I made a, a promise to myself and to those around me that one of the things that I would fight for in this country is reformation of the criminal justice system. And that is why it really, for me, is an emotional uh, contribution because I'm actually getting to do what I set out to do. And I do hope that this can be testimony to the young people looking on uh, and persons across Trinidad and Tobago that the sky is indeed the limit. And once you set your mind to something, you can in fact achieve it. Now, this whole debate, many of the uh, contributions have surrounded whether or not uh, this piece of legislation will deal with the backlog that currently exists in the judicial system as it stands. And for me, the question should not be whether or not that the passage of legislation would immediately <coughs> reduce crime and the backlog of cases at the judiciary. The question we should be asking is if, in fact, the passage of this legislation and other legislation that are linked or, or similar would, in fact, be the right thing to do by way of its passage. And the right thing in that justice is provided not only for the primary victim and offender, but also the secondary victim and offender and the wider community. In Trinidad and Tobago, our perception of justice troubles me. We are a very uh, <coughs> highly litigious society and we see justice in a fixed way. We see justice as being mainly an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But for me, Madam President, that is not how I see justice. Trinidad and Tobago is a country in search of true justice and that does not mean vindication, but rather peace of mind. Justice that one can witness from beginning to end and applaud the transparency in process. And justice that does not simply mean having the best court clothes, but rather means fairness in every sphere of life, especially when it comes to human interaction, in our schools, in our public institutions, and governance structures, and our communities. As one of the features of restorative justice notes, crime should not be seen as an offense being committed against the state, but rather an offense being committed against a victim, uh, be it a primary victim or a secondary victim uh, as well. And with that whole thinking comes the understanding that the actors involved uh, have roles and responsibilities. And therefore, these roles and responsibilities involved in the process of justice uh, being the most important uh, one of, of that is with regards to the primary offender seeking to make right the wrong that was meted out and subsequently the role of the victim or victims uh, in being willing to allow a process of repair to take place. Two of the biggest challenges facing any kind of change in this country that I personally uh, see is fear and lack of confidence. Fear that the decision to be taken may be wrong or one that may not produce the, de the desired outcome. And trust in that we do not trust our institutions to do what they have been put in place to do. And that is as a result of our understanding that in Trinidad and Tobago, corruption and collusion uh, is prevalent. I believe it is primarily for this reason that we have not established the Caribbean Court of Justice as yet as our final Court of Appeal because of that thinking. As well as on the point I feel as though if we are to adopt this court as our final Court of Appeal, uh, we will inspire confidence necessary for other Caribbean countries to follow suit 
Because it's troubling to imagine that we have the CCJ right here nestled in Trinidad and Tobago, and yet we have not saw that as our final court of appeal. So therefore, if we head down that road, imagine the kind of confidence that other Caribbean countries will have knowing that Trinidad and Tobago made that bold step. As well as, I would also want to briefly make reference to the controversial Section 34, which, in my humble view, was a good clause to provide justice for persons whose matters were unfairly prolonged because of a judicial sector that has not fully been supported by the kinds of substantive law that has and continues to be long overdue. We must accept responsibility for not being as responsive to the needs of the population. And while accepting that responsibility, ensure that when an opportunity arises, we take full and complete advantage of it. According to Senator Amin, the main reason persons in the poll that she mentioned uh, were against plea bargaining was because of the lack of public trust in the police, the DPP, and witness protection in Trinidad and Tobago. And that is always something in my time looking on, be it in politics and, and hearing some of the discussions that persons would have on the ground, they're always saying that we have these problems and as such, um, we can't really bring any kind of legislation to the fore because there is always a problem somewhere else in some other sector that would have an effect on this. But my thing is that we need to start somewhere. We need to make the first step in some stead to bring about change in this country. Yes, there would be many facets uh, that we need to fix and to implement, but I do see one step in the right direction as being necessary, regardless of the fact that we need to fix other sectors. And I would also want to encourage that we address the other problems that currently exist. Because as we all know, plea bargaining as it stands right now, uh, once uh, brought into law, this would not be able to stand on its own. Because we still have the issues with a culture in Trinidad and Tobago, which is one of our biggest problems. A culture of corruption, a culture of collusion, a culture that does not ensure that justice is received in this country. <coughs> And the question is, how then do we treat with that culture? Because you can have how many pieces of legislation in place, but if the persons who are there to implement and to enforce and to benefit from uh, the legislation, if they have not had a change of heart and a change of mind, then this will amount to nothing. So we need to look at that. But at the same time, I'm not saying that we should not be putting forward legislation that will make an impact on the judicial sector in Trinidad and Tobago. We have a very retributive system of justice in this country, and it needs to move to one that is more restorative and rehabilitative. I believe that the option of, a plea, ba of plea bargaining allows the process of rehabilitation and restore restoration to begin in one stead, because the offender admits to his or her wrongdoings and is willing to accept a sentence which even the prosecutor believes at bare minimum is commensurate to the crime being committed. Because I am very much confident that no prosecutor, especially if the crime is an heinous one, would slap the uh, offender on their wrists and, and pardon them in that stead. I don't think that we're so mad as a people in Trinidad and Tobago, despite how many other persons may look at that very same situation. So what I think moving forward in all of this is that we do have to give things a chance in this country. We do have to give certain changes uh, an opportunity to do what they are supposed to do. We have no confidence, and, and as you were uh, alluding to earlier, Madam President, uh, in terms of the, in the debate, the police has been mentioned time and time again. If we continue to always point fingers uh, and not address issues head on and do the things that are required to bring about change in this country, then we will never reach anywhere. We have to admit that we have problems across Trinidad and Tobago in many sectors, especially as it relates to the judicial sector in this country. But we have to and we must start somewhere. I do anticipate that other pieces of legislation will come forward to address similar issues in the judiciary. But at no point in time must we in one stead see any single piece of legislation as being the... Um, or the, the fix to every single issue in the judicial sector. 
This is what one piece of legislation that is going to make an impact. Now, through you, Madam President, I would say to the Attorney General, the Honorable Attorney General, that uh, suggestions have been made uh, from persons, from all senators moving forward. And I trust that uh, these suggestions will be taken into consideration because as it stands right now, the legislation would need uh, to be strengthened in order to serve its true purpose. And as, you, as the Honorable Attorney General always says, that this is a democracy. And as such, the input from all would be welcome. So with that understanding, I do think that at the end of this process, we would have a plea bargaining system uh, that we can all be proud of. But even looking beyond that, Madam President, Trinidad and Tobago, it's high time that we start to be innovative in our thinking and in our ways that we treat governance in this country. When we look at the judicial system, we need to allow the opportunity uh, for innovation to really reign. We need to stop carbon copying a lot of the things that we see on the outside from other countries. And that is really because of our colonial past. We feel as though what is done outside by the metropole uh, might be what we need to adopt in this country. And I think we need to understand more than ever that in Trinidad and Tobago, the talent that we have here, the, in, the mindset of our people, despite a lot of the times we see it as being very laser fair. We have some very, very talented people in this country who can bring ideas and suggestions to the fore. Why not Trinidad and Tobago be the lead when it comes to justice in the world? We have the potential for it. So I do think that we need to allow the judiciary to experiment uh, in certain ways uh, to produce systems and, and practices and procedures that others can be looking to Trinidad and Tobago for uh, in terms of adopting our ways of doing things. So we do have right before us uh, the Criminal Procedure Plea Discussion and Plea Agreement Bill, an act to establish a system of plea discussions and plea agreements and for matters incidental thereto. With this, I think more than anything, it would reach out to families across this country who have loved ones behind prison bars, whether innocent or guilty. They don't have the opportunity at this very moment to state or plead their case because of our flawed judicial system. I think this provides an opportunity in some stead of comfort to them knowing that our judicial system is making the kinds of moves necessary to ensure that there is justice for all. Because the fact is, according to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And as such, we need to start thinking how we can ensure that the injustices, while they may be many, are dealt with. And right now, there are persons behind bars in Trinidad and Tobago's jails who have been there for years upon years upon years and have lost faith in the criminal justice system in this country. And we need to do what we can do to restore faith in it. So as much as we would want to continue to point fingers as citizens to many of the, def the deficiencies that exist Let's also at the same time look at the progress that has been made in Trinidad and Tobago. Mediation. I am a strong advocate for mediation in this country because I do think that it will be the alternative that we require to really begin the process of healing as a nation. We are too adversarial. We are highly litigious as a society. Let's sit down with one another and treat and deal with the issues that are affecting us. We don't need necessarily a judge or a jury or a prosecutor to determine what course of action we should take when a matter arises or conflict arises. Why can't we equip, equip our population, our citizenry, with the skills they require to deal with their own problems? We need to bring back family life. We need to bring back a sense of community in this country. And yes, no plea bargaining and no uh, uh, trial by judge alone and all these things will deal with those issues. That will be treating with things on one end. 
we need to look at how we are going to deal with crime and criminality from a holistic standpoint in this country. And I think that every single member of the Senate, every single member of Parliament altogether, we have suggestions and we want to ensure that crime and criminality has come to an end in this country. But it will require baby steps and it will require big thinking at times. And we need to provide that kind of space for that to take place. So, Madam President, uh, I would like to make reference to a quote from the Trinidad Express. This would have been uh, published on January 4th, 2014, entitled Plea Bargaining Legislation Can Help. And Senior Counsel Dana Sita Hall, uh, may she rest in peace, is quoted as saying, if we continue as we are going now, in five years or so, an accused person who is to be tried in the High Court may not obtain a trial for 15 years then chances are the, ju the jury will acquit with their own ingrained system of justice. This cannot be right. It is time to activate plea bargaining and enable swifter justice. And no, true, no words could be truer. We need to put systems and mechanisms in place, and we do have that opportunity now. So I will not go into the technicalities of the bill because that is not my expertise, but I would say that we need different modes of allowing justice to reign in this country, and plea bargaining is an option. It is a tool. It is a mechanism that we can use to ensure and to assist with bringing about justice in this country. So with those few words, I want to encourage at the committee stage that we truly drill down and make the amendments as necessary. But plea bargaining is something that we should allow as an option uh, in our judicial system. I thank you.